Hey, hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Uh, this uh, video is about questionnaire data entry. So it's yet another video on questionnaire data entry. So why am I making this? Well, the first video that I made on data entry um, went down a hit and uh, many of you asked me loads and loads of questions which I like loads and loads of questions so then I did a follow-up video to that uh, and then I received even more some more questions so this video is seeks to address a particular question and that is how do you deal with questions with multiple answers the type of questions where you have that says you know tick all boxes that apply so here's what's, uh, what I'm going to do today in this video I'm going to look at I'm going to show you examples of questions with multiple answers so that you can kind of recognize it and see whether yourself is using such questions. There are going to be two types, dichotomies and categories. And in this video we're going to focus on dichotomies because these are the type that ask you to tick, tick all boxes that apply. And in that we're going to look we're going to look at data entry and we're going to look at how you generate summary statistics. So data entry, frequencies, and then we're going to explain percentage of response versus percentage of cases. And then we're going to go on to this thing of multiple response sets. Um, so why do we use them? How do we create them? And then we deal with questions. Uh, we deal with uh, questions which have no ticks in the boxes, but at the same time they are not missing values. Okay, and finally we'll finish off with um, creating a bar chart. So that's the menu. Okay, so here is an example of a question with multiple response. How should we improve public open spaces in your area? Tick the boxes that apply and then you've got make it safer, more parks, libraries, speed developments, open a, a local shopping place, more bins, especially near bus stops. And so you can tick one or more of these boxes. Another type of question you would get, which has multiple answers, is this one. List up to four ways to improve open spaces in your area. So you see here they've got blanks and you could here um, put answer one, two, three, or all four, or none even. So these two are, are the s basically they're the same. It's the same question, but it's the way that the answer has been presented. So here you've got tick boxes for specific things that you've chosen. Here it's completely left open. Something that does not inf fall in the two categories here is this one here, which um, it, one of you uh, YouTube viewers has posted to me. How often do you use your phone in the bedroom, in the bathroom, in the classroom? Never, sometimes, often. Uh, this is actually three individual questions, uh, but it's all put into one, so it makes it look like it's one question, but it's actually three. So this is not the type that we're dealing with here. It's been dealt with in the first video. It's just, you just consider them as three questions with three boxes under each one. So it's just a standard question, okay? Now in this video, we're going to be dealing with this type tick boxes because this is enough to get on with. So how do we deal with how do we do data entry when we've got such a question with tick box type of question? What we have to do is we have to create a variable for each answer. Uh, in other words, in SPSS, uh, each column represents one of these. So I'll have a column for make it safe, I'll have a column for the second response, uh, more parks, libraries, I'll have another column for shopping place, another column for more bins, especially at bus stops. Okay, because I'm lazy, I'm just going to pretend we've got two here, right, and ignore these two. I'm um, just to show you how it works. So make it safer, more parks, street development. Now, because you've watched the first um, SPSS video data entry, this I'll just kind of fast forward here. So what I've done is I've created two columns, uh, one for each response. So I've called one safe. Safe is for make it safer, and I just put dev for more parks, libraries, you know, developments, that kind of thing. Um, what we note here is that 
each of these is a yes or no type question. So I press this, yes or no. So I've coded it so it's yes or no, all right? Each of these rows represents um, an answer from a person. So if a, a person one say said yeah, yeah, ticked yes, to, well, ticked safe box and development box. A uh, second person didn't tick the safe box but did tick the development box and so on. The way I've coded it then is um, one. Well, let's go down to variable view. The way I've coded it is for each one I've coded it the same. Uh, zero for no, it did not tick the box or check the box, and one, yes, the individual checked that box. And that's what you need to do. Um, do I need to use the number zero or one? No, use whatever you like, three, four, ten, twelve, whatever you like. Okay, well having got this, although it looks like, you know, so far we've been dealing with questions where each column here will represent one, the one single answer to a question. But because this question has got more than one answer, we're supposing it's got two, uh, we need a separate column, right? But what's SPSS to know that these two columns belong to the same question? Well, I'll show you that in a moment. For now, let's generate some descriptive stats. So, uh, wait a minute. Okay, I've done the examples um, now. Yes, a dichotomy is data entry. So this is called like dichotomy type of um, response because for each one you're going to check the box yes or no. So it's you know a dichotomy. It's, like, it's one or the other. So it's yes or no. Okay, analyze, we're going to get frequencies. So analyze, what I've done before, descriptive stats, frequencies. Um, I've taken safe and development over to the other side and we've ticked the check frequencies table because we're just here looking for counts and percentages because that's what, what part of what we do in descriptive stats. Check that and here you go. So you see from our example here, we've got five, say five individuals, five, I mean, five cases and you can count like for safe it's one two three four people checked safe uh, one two three people checked um, this development thing okay so if we look at the output here I'll read it out because I'm not sure it shows very clearly on your video um, in the safe box valid number of cases is five missing none uh, same for development and then the frequencies we can see there's got two tables two separate tables one for the safe response and one for the development response and it says for the safe people there's a total of five responses which tell us what we've kind of done we've added up manually uh, of uh, the five four said yes one said no and then it gives us the frequencies I eight percent of the respondents um, said yes to safety okay and for development, you can see likewise out of the five responses, three said yes, two said no, and that represents 60% of the cases said yes. Right, you can imagine, so that's fine, but you can imagine that if I, um, if my question had several uh, answers, like in this example here, one, two, three, four, but you might have uh, several more, uh, you can see the way that I've, the method I've used to create the frequencies here, it could bit uh, you could have um, you know many many tables one for each uh, um, answer. So is there a way where we can compile these tables into one and maybe even generate uh, some more statistics, some more statistics? The answer is yes, and we can do that using. Let me get click the right button here. Something called multiple response sets. Okay, so I've answered now why do we need, why would we use them? We could use them because we can compile the frequency uh, tables for each individual response. And now I've got to, I'm going to explain how do we create them. All right. Uh, 
bear with me. All right, here we go. So what we want is we want to create a multiple response set. How do you do that? You go to analyze, multiple response, define variable sets. Okay. Now what I do here, you can see three boxes. I've got to define the variables in my set. So the set is the collection of things that belong to my question. I.e. I've got to put all the responses for my particular question into this set. So here there are only two of them, so I put them in. Okay. Now you can see here variable as coded as and then you've got two options, dichotomies and categories. Dichotomies is for the type of question where we've got checkboxes and uh, where is it? And categories, uh, variable code as categories, they're for the type of questions where you've got these blank spaces that you write down answer. Okay, so that's uh, so that's for another time. So if we go back here, uh, where dichotomies counted values what that means by there is what is the code used to, for the yes response i.e. that the box has been ticked well remember I said we used the we used one to denote yes i.e. it's been ticked so let's write the answer one okay so we've done that and then next we'll write a name so this is like the same as before name and label is just like under the variable view you have name and label so let's just say what should we say uh, do, do make something meaningful um, planning plan plan something short uh, plan plan for the area something like that that's for the labels and then we'll go add and that now takes it over to the multiple response set because it's got a dollar sign there and plan and then I close now when you've closed it you look at your data view window and nothing seems to have changed uh, that's because nothing has changed <laughs> but um, inside SPSS it has created uh, a multiple response set called plan where both of these things belong okay so how do you know if you've done it well now we want to create the frequencies again we we'll go under analyze multiple response sets before these two options, frequencies and cross tabs, were not like you couldn't click on them because I had not created the defined variable sets. But now I can check on, click on them. Uh, we're going to be looking at only at frequencies, but you can see you could do cross tabs as well. Um, just to say that why we are again why we are do making these multiple responses is because then we can just kind of compile the table for the frequencies, and also you can do um, exploratory cross tabs analysis as well if you've got like two variables we're only looking at frequencies today so click on frequencies you can see there you go that is the response set that I've created and then we take it over and then we're going to click OK alright now the numbers should be the same as before and you can see indeed they are we've got five cases non missing what we're, what we're really interested in is looking at the, this compiled frequencies table can you see that just one table as opposed to two uh, recall let's just call um, for safety we had 80% of respondents said yes and for development 60 so where do we see those numbers 80 and 60 down here um, that here percent of cases so safe um, we have 80% and uh, de um, development we have 60% okay um, but you can see in this table we've got some other figures here like this 57.1% and 42.9% what is that so this is what we have here we've got percent of responses and percent of cases the two different things now it's best for, if I can match this up with the actual data, put this side by side. Okay. So if we look at n first, that's number. Uh, safe, it says 
uh, number of responses, a number of ticks for safe is four. One, two, three, four. Yep. Uh, out of all the t ticks for there's three for development. One, two, three. Okay, that makes a total of seven ticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That seven is not the same as the number of people, right? So just counting the number of ticks. Now, if we do 4 divided by 7, that's going to give us 57.1%. And if we do 3 divided by 7, we're going to get 42.9%. In other words, this percentage here is just looking at, out of all the ticks, the number, the percentage uh, that was ticked for um, that particular answer. So 57.1 versus 42.9, that means, you know, that's 57 of all uh, the um, uh, ticks for, uh, for for the for planning um, planning purposes that was 57 percent slightly more for people going for safety rather than development okay percentage of cases that's just the same as before that is out of the number of people so not out of the number of ticks is out of the number of people so this is saying that out of all the number of people responded 80 percent went for safe 60% uh, went for development and you can see the percentages here add up to more than 100% whereas here add up to 100% it can add up to more than 100% here because each person can tick more than one box that's the whole point okay good now if you read most introductory textbooks this is the way they kind of present it no span in the works um, but now I'm going to throw some spanners in the works and then you can kind of see uh, um, that it's, it's, uh, there's some things to think about. Okay, so just to remind myself what I'm going to do. Um, dealing with questions with no ticks in the boxes but are that are not missing values. Okay, that's reminded me. So let, let me do this. Um, let's say that the third person didn't tick any boxes. That's with zero didn't tick a safe box, zero didn't tick a development box. Okay, let's run let's run the analysis again. Let's run first of all the frequencies. Uh let me pause. Mm, before I do that, I think I just want to summarize what I've just done here. Um I've shown you two ways to get the frequency table. Uh, one is the standard way using analyze and frequencies, which but that way generates a frequency table for each response for your question. But I said that a neater way, and one that generates a bit more summary statistics, supposing that of interest to you, is to use uh, the multi to gather the question, responses up in a multiple response set and then we can use the frequency command and the multiple response and that then gives us, compiles it in just one table which is neat and gives us an additional column here of, um, of statistics if it interests you. Okay. Um, so it doesn't mean that you have to create multiple responses, it's just it's supposed to be, it's, it's a convenience to present your data. But of course if you feel more comfortable you could just uh, forget about the multiple response and just um, create the frequency tables and then compile your own table uh, picking out these percentages. It's up to you. Just giving you an option. Okay so span it in the works. Yep. Yeah, okay so we said the third case um, nothing. Alright so it didn't take any boxes. Let's see what happens now. We've got analyze uh, descriptives and frequencies, same as before, Descri display frequency tables, let's look at the okay, it's 60% uh, for safety, 60% for development yeah, because it's, you know, out of five cases it's three ticks for safety and three ticks for development, so in each case that's three out of five, that's 60%, three out of five uh, not 0.6 or 60 percent. But let's see what happens when we do the multiple response set. We'd expect a similar answer, wouldn't we? 60 and 60. So frequencies. It's there. So we'll click OK. So 60 and 60. Do we see that? 
Well, we don't see that. We see 50, oh hang on, we see 75% percent of cases and 75%. So it's gone up uh, by 15%. Now what the heck's happening there? Because the, the numbers here do not match the numbers we've just reported up here. Right? And that's a worry initially. And you don't see this in, in well, I'm, I, it took me a while to find it in any kind of introductory SPSS book. So um, this is something you have to watch out for. Because um, this is kind of what's happened here is that what you've got is we've actually got five responses, right? But look, it says, and the summary of cases, it says we've got valid four and missing one. Uh, what happens is that it's SPSS expects there to be at least one tick in the box. If you haven't ticked any, the response has not ticked any, it automatically assumes that that person has kind of just missed out that question. So I hope first of all you can see the problem there, uh, what the issue is. So somebody who has not ticked, somebody who has not ticked any of these boxes, right? Well that could be for two reasons. One is that the per that is genuinely genuinely missing a person just didn't respond another one is that you might not afford any of these have applied right let's just suppose that an individual might not have thought that any of these um, were relevant and so did not take any of them in that case that's not missing you know that that person consciously chose not to take any of them so we're now dealing with the case here, dealing with questions with no ticks in the boxes, but that are not missing. All right. If there w was missing, then the uh, the statistic reported it, this would be complete. This would be fine. But I want to deal with the so you wouldn't have to do anything. But suppose you know want to take account of the fact that the thing is not missing. Well, one thing. Uh, is the design of a question. We should have allowed for another option. Say none of the above applies or none of the above and let them tick that because then we can tell if they did. So if the person did tick none of the above that would mean that it's not missing, we'd know that. Uh, if they didn't tick that, any of these, then we definitely know they just skipped the question or just didn't reply. Okay. So we need to create another column for the sums to add up. None, something like that. Uh, something where it says none did not re respond to any of the questions. So we'll just code it uh, it's like before uh, zero for no, no, did not check the box. One for yes, ticked the box. Um, like with all books, I'm using these words no and yes, but if you want to make it more kind of um, you could use something which is like uh, did not tick, ticked, or no check, check, something that's more meaningful, all right? Okay, so I've done that now, and I've done that, and that means I have to recreate my sets for it to take effect. So this plan here that I've created before, I remove that. Now I do it all over again, but this time I've got none as well. Okay, that's all there. Uh, counted as one, name, same as before, plan, plan of the for area, and then I add it, okay, and then I close it, great, and now I'm going to go to um, analyze, and, uh, okay, yeah, I've got straight uh, response and frequencies, take this over there, go okay, Uh, and then you see that uh, nothing has changed because I've made a mistake. Uh, I made a mistake because, oh god, because I didn't fill in this thing, right? So, uh, first person did not tick that, second person, but this person did tick that, say, because he, he said, supposing this person, individual, thought that none of the cases apply. There, I had to do that. Now this is going to make more sense. So I'll go again, analyze, uh, multiple response frequencies, and OK. Great. Can you see now that under percent of cases, 60%, 60%, which is what we had when we ran analyze frequencies. Analyze and frequencies. Uh, 
uh, okay uh, analyzing frequencies anyway yes 60 percent 60 percent of the frequencies okay so it's so there that's how you solve that problem okay that leaves us one more thing for descriptive stats bar charts you know you might like a nice bar chart here So in other words, I want a bar chart for safe development, none here, one will be 60, another one will be 60, and then 20%. How do I represent the bar chart? I go to graphs, go to legacy dialogues, go to bar. Now under bar here, by default, under here, um, data in chart R, by default will be set to summaries for groups of cases, but we don't want that. We want summaries for separate variables, because each column is a variable and we want to do it for each variable so we want to check that and then we'll go define okay and then what I want to do you get screen looking like this I want to take all three and I take it over the bars represent box that gives me a kind of statistic um, by default it's giving me the mean but I don't want the mean so I want the percentages now you can see you've got you've got a whole load of things that you can do for uh, statistics here. I want percentages, and this is where you've got to listen up. Percentages, right? The way I've coded the thing is one that they check the box and zero otherwise. Okay, and I'm to calculate the percentages that tick the box. I need to know the number of ones that have been checked. So I'm looking in the middle here. I'm looking. I've got a choice here of percentage above a certain number, uh, percentage below. So I'm counting the percentage above zero because I'm counting the number of ones because I've only got the number for each response of zero and one. Okay, so percentage above, uh, and I put zero here because zero is no, did not check, or one is checked. If you use different numbers, so long as you've understood what I've said, you'll be able to kind of change this number accordingly. Then I'm going to go continue. Then I'm going to go OK. And I'm going to bring up the graph. And here you go. I'm going to make this fit. There you go. So safe, 60%. Development, 60%. Non, approximately 20%. And if you do that and tidy it up, uh, your supervisor would be probably pleased. OK, so I have covered now. I've pretty much done it. Um, so now you know um, what a question of multiple answers is and you can tell the difference between one that's a dichotomies type and one that's categories type and in this video we focused on dichotomies just because I think that's the one that you guys are more likely to use and so we've covered a whole load of issues there. Um, the final question I'll point out is that the kind of analysis we've done here is for summary stats alright does that and some of you might be thinking, well, can I do more than summary stats with them? Can I do regression with them, for example? Can I do other things? The answer is yes. doesn't mean that the kind of the multiple response, um, by creating multiple response, we can do, we're limited only to, you can see under here, doing frequencies, which I've shown you, and that's good for if you've got variables and you want to look at them one by one. We could do cross tabs, which I haven't shown you, but that's, but that's I haven't made a video on that before. You know, cross tabs. But this cross tabs will not give you the Pearson's correlation. It's just purely for kind of summary statistics, just calculating percentages. Okay, so it's very limited. It's very limited. Right. Uh, no doubt there'll be things that you'll pick up on and ask me questions. But remember, I don't ask. Uh, because of time, I don't answer questions individually, but if there's enough people answering the same type of question, answering, asking the same question, uh, I'll eventually get round to it. Okay, uh, hope that has been useful. Thanks for watching.